I'm just arriving now. Follow us on this journey. Let's go to church and worship. Before we start every service, we want to check in with our media team. Hey, Pastor, we're all good to go. The sun check is done. The lights are set. We have the guys here, they're ready, and we're ready to roll for the live stream. We're so blessed to have this community that we call Calvary Family. So, this is not the end of our journey. Join us on our webpage. Know Christ and make him know. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome aboard Flight Calvary 10207. Our flight time is approximately two hours, or as we like to call it, worship service. We are currently in the initial stages of preparation to take our worship to another level. As we travel to a higher altitude, we do anticipate turbulence and electronic devices may not work. Our flight is designed to handle these conditions, so there is no need to be alarmed. We recommend keeping your seatbelts fastened while praying for the cabin crew. In the very likely event of technical difficulties, please do not look for the easiest way to exit the flight vessel or criticize the crew members. As we travel over enemy territory, we do anticipate unfriendly fire. Our chief commander has assured us of safe passage through the valley of the shadow of death. Standing beside you are crew members that volunteer to use their weapons of worship to defend against any attacks from the enemy. Once again, we remind you to fasten your seat belts and keep praying and worshipping throughout the flight. I'd like to remind you that smoking is prohibited on board. Thank you for choosing to fly with Calvary. All right. Praise God and we're going to get started right away. Hallelujah. I know the presence of the Lord is already here. He's never late, right? And I thank God for those who are on time here today. Praise God. Hallelujah. Would you like to lift up a hand towards heaven and lift up your hearts and you can lift your voice and you can worship. Hallelujah. Father, we come and we enter into your presence with praise, with adoration. And we want you to know this morning we love you, O oh God. You have been good to us. You first loved us. And we come to tell you today that we love you, O oh God. We want to worship you, Lord. May the singing of these worship songs be acceptable to you, O oh God. Lord, may the ministry of the word touch deep within our hearts that would draw us closer to you, O oh God. Let the church rise up. Let there be a new spiritual energy, O oh God, to rise up with the gospel. Hallelujah. And take the gospel to lost people in whatever remaining time we have, Heavenly Father. We're here surrendering to you, O oh God. Lord, we bring our this morning. Many will come with needs, O oh God. The many who will be watching online, O oh God, with needs. And I pray the power of God will touch their lives, God, breaking the yokes of bondages in Jesus' name, liberating lives, bringing healing to the sick, revival to those that are waning, O oh God, in Jesus' name. Come, Lord, hallelujah, revive your people, bless your people, and you be exalted in the midst of it all. We resist every hindrance from the devil in Jesus' name, and we rebuke every demon assigned against your people in Jesus' name. Today we curse every power of darkness, and we declare freedom and victory and peace and joy in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Come and have your way today, Lord. In Jesus' name, would you shout amen? Amen. Good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Amen? Amen. We're going to sing, We Are a Chosen Generation. How many of you believe that you are chosen and called by God this morning? Why don't you give a shout amen if you believe that you are chosen and called by God this morning? We're going to put our hands together.
you know you're a friend of God, say amen. amen. If you know you're a friend of God, say amen. amen. One more time. If you know you're a friend of God, say amen. 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 That you are my full of me That you hear me When I call Is it true that you are thinking of me How you love me that you have called us friends. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that you have called us friends, that you have called us chosen. Father, we just thank you this morning. We bless your name. You are awesome in this place, Lord God. We magnify you, Lord Jesus. We exalt you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, we just give you all the praise and all the glory and all the honor that is due your name. We worship you, Lord Jesus. We're going to sing this song. My God is awesome. He can move mountains. Do you believe that this morning? Do you believe that this morning?
awesome this morning. Father, we just praise you. We give you the praise. We give you the praise. You are worthy, oh God. You are worthy of all of the praises. Come on, just begin to praise him this morning. Just begin to tell him that he is worthy of it all. Father, we just worship you. We honor you, Lord Jesus. We worship you. We exalt you, Father God. We're going to sing all the saints and angels. They bow before your throne, Lord.
have a word of prayer. Amen. I want you to join me as we pray this morning. Israel has come under attack. And I got an update this morning from Israel. There were 361 missiles and drones shot at Israel last night. All of them were shot out of the sky except only one went past through. And, and there was no significant damage. One little girl was hurt. It was not serious. And we thank God for that. Amen. God is protecting his people. And I want us to pray for Israel this morning. But we want to pray for people who might be sick. Is there somebody here this morning who needs a healing? I want to pray for you. Anybody here? Anyone? Praise God. All right. Maybe you don't want to put your hand up. It's fine. That's okay. God understands. Amen. So hold hands with somebody. We're going to pray. We're going to pray. Hallelujah. Lord, we want to thank you that you are still on the throne. There are problems around us. There are issues. There are problems. There are perplexity, oh God. Difficult times. But we thank you, Lord, that you are still in control. Nothing overwhelms you, oh God. You see all things. You can do all things. Hallelujah, Lord God. And we thank you that you're a prayer answering God. And we lift up the people of Israel this morning, the nation of Israel. Your word admonishes us to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. These are your elect people, oh God. They have come under attack before. But you have always watched over them and you guard them, oh God. And we thank you for the report this morning, God, that all 360 missiles were shot out of the sky. One went through God, but it was not a serious damage. We give you the praise. We give you the praise. Watch over the people, oh God. Let the blood of Jesus cover their lives. Even now, Lord, we pray that many of the Jewish people will recognize the Messiah. They will turn to you, oh God. They will cry out to you, hallelujah. You have a purpose for this nation, oh God. We we'll believe in you, God, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Watch over your people, God. Comfort them. Many did not sleep through the night. Many of the children, Lord, they may be hungry. There may be things around them, oh God. Lord, that they don't know. They don't have answers. Lord, I pray that you would come to comfort them. You provide for their needs, oh God, in Jesus' name. I pray, God, that unity hallelujah hallelujah in jesus name blessed be the name of the lord blessed be the name of the lord and father i pray for our believers right here i pray for those who are on the live stream god those in need of healing this morning we believe in a miracle work in god we have experienced your healing touch my god and we pray that you will touch everyone that needs a healing in jesus name we rebuke and reject sickness because we know that by the stripes of jesus we are healed we know the power of god that there's nothing impossible for you oh god touch the sick touch the sick bring miracles healing healing deliverance in the name of jesus glory be to god hallelujah Minister to all kinds of needs this morning, oh God. We place them before you, Father, because you're a good God. You're a loving Father. And Lord, you care for us. You understand us, oh God. Minister, Lord, bring peace to every heart this morning. Bring renewed strength, Lord God. Hallelujah. Revive our spirits, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Thank you for what you're going to do. We give you the glory. 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 Yes. Yes, we give you the glory. Every heart lifted. Every voice lifted. Hallelujah. Give him the glory. Give him the praise.
because he lives he lives hallelujah praise God praise God praise God turn around and share some love touch somebody wave at them put a smile on your face hallelujah help me welcome everybody around you glory to God amen thank you Jesus thank you Lord you may be seated you may be seated good to see our visiting friend up there amen praise God and how many people are here for the first time at Calvary can I see you just I just want to say welcome to you first time I see you amen amen anybody else just want to welcome you this morning God bless you God bless you hallelujah now don't forget the building is open every Monday from 10 to 1 if you would like to come in for prayer, you know people want to come to a church for prayer. We're here. Amen. Now, a lot of good things are happening. And by the way, we've been handing out literature. I know many of you did. You handed out this literature. Many of you spoke to people with a little yellow book, The Four Spiritual Laws. And spoke to them about Jesus. Amen. If you, if you haven't done that so far, I want you to make use of all of these things because we need to take the gospel to lost people. Amen. We can't be sitting down these days. We have to be aggressive and accelerate what we must do for the Lord because the time is short. Amen. Praise God. So if you haven't done as yet, I want to encourage you to call them up this week. During this week, call those people who you touch base with and, uh, and just encourage them in the ways of the Lord. And don't be afraid to put forward the question with all humility but, but firmly and with boldness. Are you saved? Are you ready to meet God? Amen. And we need to do that so that we can see people get saved before it is too late. All right. Now, uh, the Sunday school breakfast conference was, uh, was canceled recently. And they're making arrangements for that on the first Saturday of May. Now, this coming Friday is going to be big here. We have a special guest coming in. He's a singer. He's a preacher. It's going to be great ministry. I don't know the guy, but I've been told about him, and I'm excited about Friday night. I want you to pass the word around and invite lots of people. Pack out this place. Amen? It's going to be a special night. Um, praise God. I believe we do have a, a promotion on that. Yep. His name is Prodigal Son. Some of you, some of you know Prodigal Son? You do? Yeah, okay. So that's, that's coming on Friday night at 7.30. Amen. And um, Fine Arts is, uh, pre preparation for National Fine Arts is coming up. We just came out of, of uh, the District Fine Arts, as you know. And many of our young people are graduating on to national level. Hallelujah. We're excited about that. And we have a video that we want to show you. Yeah, boy. 
Yeah, amen. So, <laughs> they're my kids. I love them. And, uh, and they're well behaved. They're good kids. And God is raising them up. God's going to use them. Amen. Listen, you have, you have nieces, nephews, children, grandchildren. Bring them here, all right? Listen, don't let your kids grow up in New York without Jesus. Bring them here, and we're going to help to train them for the Lord, all right? Amen. They have a good future when they walk with Jesus. Now, uh, also, Hope Day is coming up, and I want Pastor Robin to come tell us more about Hope Day. Do you know where there is darkness, light can shine the brightest? New York City is characterized by darkness, ozone park. But do you know there are over 800 lights in Calvary Assembly of God? Do you know you are one of them? Yes, you are. Jesus said, we are the light of the world. And on June 8th, you have an opportunity to shine Jesus' light. Last week, we had our first promo, and I'm going to ask the guys to type my number up there. The number is 347 this guy's going to get it up now. Last week, 25 of you registered. Can we give the Lord a big hand for that? And this is the last week for you to register. And I don't want you to say you don't know the number. The number again is 3, 4, 6, 6, 1, 7, 3, 6. Your t-shirt size, hallelujah, your name will show up and you will be a part of Hope Day. If you don't text that number, it's your opportunity not to shine in a place of darkness. Hope Day is June 8th. It's a time when Calvary Assembly come together and bless our community with lots of love. Can you imagine heaven is having a party and we at Calvary is hosting it. God bless you. Yeah, thank you, Pastor Robin. Thank you. So some people are going to volunteer to actually come on site and put their hands in the work. Some of us are going to invite lots of people around past the word rooms so the community can get involved. Amen. And if you want to donate, surely we have everything already set up. But if you feel like it's something you want to get involved in, we can walk you through that also. Hallelujah. So, can I get you to stand and we're going to worship God with our giving at this time. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. I like when people get excited about giving to the Lord. Two. So let's get our tithes and offering ready. We're going to lift it up to the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Can somebody just say, Lord, you've been kind to me, and I just want to give it back to you. It's my pleasure, Lord, to bring it back to you. Come on, somebody worship God. Worship God. Hallelujah. 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 We worship you. We worship you, we worship you, O oh God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. What a joy, Lord, that we could bring it back to you, Father, because you've been kind and generous to us. Lord, we will not be miserly towards you, O oh God. We will be free and generous. And so, Lord, I pray that you would bless every seed that is sown today. Multiply it and return it abundantly into these families according to your promise. In Jesus' name, would you shout amen? amen. Give it joyfully. Amen. Every praise belongs to our God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Every praise to our Father. Amen. amen.
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Maybe seated. Maybe seated. Let me take you to the Word of God this morning. Hallelujah. So we're back studying what in the world is going on, the signs of the times. And I want to tell you this, if you've been listening to the news at all, you will know that things are moving very rapidly. A lot of important things going on around the world, and it is moving very rapidly. Hallelujah. So uh, praise God. I want you to open your Bible this morning to uh, Matthew chapter 24, as well as I'm going to actually begin in Luke chapter 21. Hallelujah. So I'll be starting on Luke chapter 21, and I'm going to read a long, long portion, because we need to recap. We took a break for the Easter weekend, and then we had a funeral, and we do miss Pastor Ganesh. It's just really fresh, and we talk about him. We pray for the family. I want to encourage you to pray for Sister Kathy and the family, and, uh, because these are real difficult moments. Among others, there's others that lost their loved ones too. So, uh, so we do miss um, our pastor. So we're getting back on track, and we're going to be in Luke chapter 21. If you got to say amen. You can share your Bibles, open your devices, whatever you have for your Bible. Luke 21, I'm going to read from verse number 6. Let's begin to pray first of all. I want, to, I want you to ask God to bless you in the Word today. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, God, thank you that you are awesome and you are good to us, Lord God. Thank you, Lord, for all that you have done to plan our salvation, to execute that plan, to draw us into the plan, O oh God, so that we can be eternally saved, O oh God. We're so grateful, O oh God. And we thank you, Lord, for the signs that you have laid out. And we are beginning to see those signs, Lord, manifest. And we pray that it will consolidate our faith, Lord God, that we would love one another and we would rise up, Lord, with aggression, spiritual aggression, to fulfill the task that you have laid upon us, O oh God, that this gospel should reach um, lost people all over the world. So bless us today that we be strengthened in Jesus' name. Somebody say amen. amen. Praise God. Luke 21 verse 6. As for these things which you behold, the days will come in the which there shall not be left one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. We went through some of these already. And so as we read, I want your mind to be refreshed, right? And then we'll get into today's portion. And they asked him, saying, Master, but when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign when these things shall come to pass? And he said, take heed that you be not deceived. For many shall come in my name, saying, I'm Christ. And the time draweth near, go ye not therefore after them. But when you shall hear of wars and commotions, be not terrified. For these things must first come to pass, but the end is not by and by. Then said he unto them, Nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And great earthquakes shall be in diverse places, and famines and pestilences and fearful sights, and great signs shall there be from heaven. But before the, all these, they shall lay their hands on you and persecute you, delivering you up to the synagogues and into prisons, being brought before kings and rulers for my name's sake." Hallelujah. And, uh, and it shall turn to you for a testimony. Settle it therefore in your hearts, not to meditate before what you shall answer. For I will give you a mouth and wisdom which all your adversaries shall not be able to gainsay or resist. And you shall be betrayed both by parents and brethren and kinsfolk and friends, and some of you shall they cause to be put to death, and you shall be hated of all men for my name's sake, but there shall not an hair of your head perish. In your patience possess ye your souls, but when you shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. 
Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains, and let them which are in the midst of it depart out, and let not them that are in the countries enter therein. For these be the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. But woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days. For there shall be great distress in the land, and wrath upon his, this people. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword, and shall be led away captive into all nations. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles, until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. And there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth distress of nations with perplexity, the sun and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of heaven shall be shaken and then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Yeah, you should be shouting at that one. And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads, for your redemption draw it nigh. And he spake to them a parable, behold the fig tree and all the trees. When they now shoot forth, you see and know of your own selves that summer is now nigh at hand. So likewise you, when you see these things come to pass, know that the kingdom of God is nigh at hand. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass away till all be fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. And take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness and cares of this life. And so that, so that day come upon you unawares. For as a snare shall it come on all them that dwell on the, on the face of the whole earth. Watch ye therefore and pray always that you may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. So uh, a, verse number 18, I want to just back up and point that out to you. It says, but there shall not an hair of your head perish what does that mean he's talking about this he's saying in the in the same context in the same context he says he says you shall be betrayed by parents and brethren and kinsfolk and friends and they shall cause you to be put to death and you shall be hated of all men but there shall not a hairy head perish what does that mean it seems to be conflicting what Jesus is saying here that you'll be hated and you'll be put to death and yet you'll be spared not a hair of your head will, will perish what is he talking about it should be read with an eternal perspective that even though you must suffer and for the gospel and you may be martyred for the gospel yet you are secure and you will be made whole in eternity God has this promise on your life you will not carry losses because in eternity you're blessed and rewarded amen and you'll be completely whole Last, last week I was preaching at the, at the funeral and I was saying Nero was going to behead Paul. But Paul was not afraid. Paul says there's a crown waiting for me. Because he knew that Nero would take off his head. When Jesus comes he's going to put his head back and put a crown on his head. Amen. Hallelujah. Now verse 26 is curious. So I want to talk a little bit about that. Verse 26 it says men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth for the powers of heaven shall be shaken listen listen the cdc jointly with the aha and you can check this up on the website cdc.gov slash heart disease it says this heart disease is now the leading cause of death among men and women and people of most racial and ethnic groups in the united states I just, in my little mental faculty, thought this is a funny way of writing the statement, but the statement is fact. The substance of it is fact. Heart disease is the leading cause of death. The thing that tickled me when it said, for men and women and people of most racial and ethnic groups, I thought that's a funny way of saying it. Anyway, um, going on, on that website it says one person dies every 33 seconds in the United States from cardiovascular disease about 695,000 people in the United States 
died from heart disease in 2021. That's one out of every five deaths was heart disease. Heart disease cost the United States about $239.9 billion each year from 2018 to 2019. This includes the cost of healthcare services, medicines, and lost productivity due to death. So Jesus is accurate. He says, in the last days, we'll see all these signs going on, and men's hearts will fail them for fear. And so we have come to the point where heart disease is the main killer. In verse 34, you'll see something here that says, watch this. Verse 34, he says, And take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness and cares of this life, and so that they come upon you unawares. Now, what's surfeiting? You need, you, we need to understand what's surfeiting. Here's what it is. It's overindulgence. It means sort of like gluttony. It's a gluttony not only for food, but for other, uh, any other means of medicating oneself from worry. Right? So people are going to be anxious, fearful, and they will worry, and they will look for something to medicate them to overcome that condition. Some people eat a lot when they, get, when they feel worried or depressed. Am I talking right? You go, you go to eating. Some people will turn to drinking. Some people turn to drugs. There are many other things. Some, some people get glued to their television, just hoping to, to not think about their problems. Entertainment, amusement. Some people go shopping, go wild with shopping. But you, people do all of these things, amen, to overcome. But Jesus warned us about this, right? Jesus said, take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting drunkenness, and so on. Listen, we need to have a balanced life, and that comes when you're rooted in Christ. You're rooted in the Word of God, you'll have a balanced life. Amen? And God's going to help you to be wise, and you find yourself in the right company, so you stay away from temptation. Listen, the best way to overcome temptation is stay away from it. Right? Find yourself in the right company that we can encourage one another in the ways of God. Amen. Now, when people uh, indulge in surfeiting and overindulgence, here's what happens. It results in obesity, minimal productivity, forfeiture of happiness, and good relationships. So I want to drop down now to... Uh, Get back to verse, verse 12 to verse 19. Let's go to verse 12 to verse 19. And then I will switch over to Matthew chapter, nine, chapter 24 verse 9. In Luke chapter 12 it says, Before all these things they shall lay hands on you and persecute you, delivering you up to the synagogues and into prisons being brought before kings and rulers for my name's sake. And it shall turn to you for a testimony. Settle it therefore in your hearts not to meditate before what you shall answer. For I will give you a mouth and wisdom which all your adversaries shall not be able to gainsay or resist. Now this is not about preaching. Some people think that they don't have to prepare to preach. Just open your mouth. God will t tell you what to say. And they end up going on, rambling on, and sometimes, you know, li listen. This is not about preaching. This is about when you're being under persecution and you're called to answer charges. He's saying, don't be afraid. I'll be there to help you along, right? Okay, now, and verse 16, you shall be, watch this now, you shall be betrayed both by who? Parents and brethren, and kinsfolk, and friends, and some of you shall they cause to be put to death, and you shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. I want to talk a little bit about that, but let's read Matthew chapter 24. We'll read this version here, Matthew 24 verse 9. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you, and you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended. And I tell you, what a prophetic word that is. These days, people are so 
easily offended. You got to be careful how you walk around them. Every little thing you say, you just got to be careful. You're walking on eggshells all the time. People are so offended at everything. Listen, if you're going to live the Christian life, you got to have a tough skin. Yeah. All right, and then we go down. This many shall be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another and many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. On my first installment, I believe it was that we talked about deception in the last days because that was the first thing Jesus addressed um, in Matthew 24. So if you missed it, you can go back. The videos are always there. Now, and verse 12, it says, And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Now, this, this seems to suggest that the people who you think should care for you, they might surprise you. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Somebody say amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. So persecution, I want to talk about persecution and betrayal of Christians as a sign of the prophetic in the last days. So persecution of God's people has always been around. We saw it in the Old Testament prophets, how they were imprisoned, they were sawed uh, asunder, and they were... They were uh, um, they were persecuted. In the New Testament, the early church came under persecution. Persecution against Christians was always around. In fact, the first martyr, Stephen, paid the ultimate sacrifice within weeks of the birth of the church. Persecution continued in the Roman Empire and throughout church history. Now, in modern times, you would think that people's eyes would be enlightened and we would respect each other's views and preserve life. More Christians are, were martyred in the 20th century than in the previous 19 centuries combined. Mostly from Islamic and communist countries. So Charles Spurgeon said this, persecution would reveal the traitors within the church as well as enemies without. I didn't say that. Charles Spurgeon said that. In Luke 21, 16, we read where it says, you shall be betrayed both by parents and brethren and kinsfolk and friends. And some of you they shall cause to put to death. Now, this is your own family we're talking about. Family who cannot be trusted. Family who are training their hearts and their spirits to be rebellious and divisive, even in their own homes. And I want to tell you, I've, I've said this many times to people, or people in conversations. It is important to me what spirit is growing inside of you. I don't mind if you want to leave this church, you want to go to another church, that's your choice. You're free to do that. We don't put seat belts in our chairs. But it's important what spirit is growing inside of you. Even in family circles, people deceive one another. People are selfish. And one of these days, under pressure, you'll be surprised what they will do to you. We need to address family trust and support in these last days. Parents, listen, we, we blame young people for misbehavior many times. We don't have a lot of them in this church, but, but we, we, don't we tend to blame young people for misbehavior? And, and it's true. They are of age. They should take responsibility for their actions. But I want to tell you, a lot depends on how the parents have dealt with them and how the parents have raised them. <laughs> parents have a great responsibility in the way our children behave. Amen. So there has to be this uh, breaking of the tension so that we could come together to help our kids find the best for their future. Watch this. Parents must do more to instill in their children love and faithfulness to Jesus and to each other. That's why our families have family devotions. 
In family devotions, you care for one another, you pray for one another, you discuss issues, you pray for those things, amen, and you, you promise and you give them your support, amen? And so they know they're not going out there alone, that you're with them, you're going to support them. They have an issue, they feel free to come home, they can talk with you. I don't want to go off on family teaching this morning, I'll, we have to do the prophetic, right? But I'm just in... I'm just interjecting a little something here for family relationships because that's the text of scripture what it says. Listen, it, it may be easier when they are infants and preteens to instill certain things in them. Once they get past that, it gets a little more difficult because they're curious, they want to be independent, and they're exposed to a lot more influences outside. Amen? So, so it's important, folks, listen, start early to train your children. But it's never too late, whatever it is, even if they're married and you feel that you need to give them some advice, you should have the courage prayerfully to, to tell them and give them the advices. Give them the advices, all right? Praise God. And, uh, and so at any rate, you have to start somewhere. And let me tell you, do you know when is the best time to start instilling righteousness, respect, and support and care for one another? When is the best time to start? Today. Today is the day to start. Today is the day. When you leave church today, you need to get your family around someplace, wherever. If, you, if you're at home or you go out someplace, wherever it is, call your family members together and you begin to tell them, listen, listen, maybe we have not been doing everything right. But I believe from today on, God can help us to change things. And we need each other. You're going to need me one day. And I need you. Amen. And we need to trust one another. We need to be honest with one another. Amen. Praise God. So call them together and listen, teach them memory verses. Every day in your family devotions, teach them memory verses. Teach them how to pray. Listen to them pray, right? You don't be praying over them all the time. You call on them to pray and listen to them how they pray. Are you with me here so far? Amen. Teach them how to show respect towards each other and towards their neighbors, towards people of the opposite sex. Teach them how to do these things. Reward good behavior and penalize bad behavior. Let them know they must be disciplined. Are you with me? Amen. In church, get them to clap their hands. You're sitting near them in church. You, you tell them, come on, clap your hands and sing. I want to hear your voice when you're singing. I want to see you lift your hands. Amen. And you, you have to teach them. Listen, there was, a, there was a time when we go to church and we get slapped around. If you don't do the right thing. These days, parents are afraid of their children. And we need to take back the territory. And make sure we teach them and impart good things in them. Pay, teach them to pay attention to Bible teaching. Amen. In church, look around, even right now, look around and tell your friends, turn off the phone. Come on. Tell them, come on. Look at them who's, who's on the phone. Tell them, turn off the phone. You have to learn how to teach them right thing because the day will come on the pressure. They're going to betray one another unless we give them this teaching. Hallelujah. Teach them to love God through giving of tithes. 10% of everything. If you give them pocket money, remind them, I'm giving you pocket money. 10% belongs to the Lord. Do you know how, delight, how, how much delight we, we feel when I, I come home and I hear, my little grandson is one year old. And he must have an envelope to lift up before the Lord. And somebody will lift him and take him over and he will drop it into the offering box. And I get so much pleasure when I hear that. Amen. You must teach them. And you must check with them now and then. Husbands need to check with their wives. Wives need to check with them. Have you been faithful to the Lord with your tithes? It's the way we show love to God. And, and listen, you know what the scripture says when you don't give your tithes to the Lord? 
What what Bible call you? What Bible call you? Yes? Okay. You don't want those people in your house. That's that's bad. That's bad. Young people, I want to talk to young people now. I, I'm exhorting you, listen, submit to your parents and others in authority and leadership. You may not understand everything. Your day will come when you will understand it. But for now, follow leadership and submit to authority. There are too many out on the streets. You hear it every day. You hear, you hear it on the news every day. There are too many of them. They have built within themselves such a rebellious spirit, they cannot obey the instructions of policemen. Let me tell you, any policeman stop me, and he says, do this, do this, put your hand up, put your hand in the air, lean on the car, listen, I'm, I'm cooperating, don't worry about me. You, you, I'm going to cooperate because I want to get home. I want to get home to my family. Let a good spirit grow within you. Reject the spirit of disobedience, selfishness, and disrespect. It is dangerous to let a rebellious spirit grow in your heart. Let the family be united, loving, supporting one another as you serve the Lord together. All right, so Jesus again referenced here deception under pressure. All right? And we covered this before, but here is, he's, he's reminding us again, verse 11, false prophets will arise and deceive many. Amen. So, so watch this. Despite persecution and betrayal, there will be those who love the Lord and will endure all adversities to be faithful to him. Those who remain faithful unto death will be eternally saved. And rewarded. Revelations 2.10. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold the devil shall cast some of you into prison. That you may be tried. And you shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death. And I will give thee a crown of life. Let me bring you a little story about persecution. There is a Chinese dissident. That came to the United States. A writer. And her name is Yu Ji. She tells a story uh, in the August issue of First Things magazine. Yu Ji reports that since 1949, when the communists took over and Christian missionaries were expelled, the number of Christians in China has multiplied from half a million back in 1949. Half a million Christians then. But under the communist regime... They have multiplied to more than 60 million today. And, and if current growth, rate, growth rates continue, by the year 2030, and I want you to remember 2030 just now. By the year 2030, Christians in China will exceed 200 million. Making China the country with the largest Christian population in the world. It used to be the United States. According to the U.S. Commission of International Religious Freedom, over the past year, the Chinese government has stepped up its persecution of religious groups deemed a threat to the state's supremacy and maintenance of socialist society. Christian communities have borne a significant brunt of the oppression, with numerous churches bulldozed and crosses torn down. Yet, as UG reports, listen to this now, Chinese Christians have refused to give in. In fact, she says, one of the phrases I've heard most often among them is this, the greater the persecution, the greater the revival. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And may God give us the same spirit. That the more the church is persecuted in the United States, the stronger the Christians will be. We will show up and we will pray up and we will evangelize and we will lift up Jesus and we will sing our songs about Jesus. We'll encourage our children to walk with Jesus. Amen. May there be a great revival among us. Hallelujah. 
Now let's talk about the preaching of the gospel. Here's what verse 14 says. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. Then shall the end come. Many of us would view this as just among one of the signs of the end times. It's deeper than that. It is a nugget in the midst of chaos and ruin. If you will go through rubbish and you find a precious something, this is what it is. In the midst of all the chaos and the disasters and the distresses and all these things, Jesus is saying there's good news. This gospel will still be preached. Good news. The people can still get saved. Hallelujah. Amen. And people will get a chance to hear the gospel before the end comes. You and I are privileged to be called to this mission. We shall see many souls rescued from hell and populate heaven. Listen, in the midst of all the forecasted disasters, this is a nugget of hope. God always sends a message of hope in the midst of warnings of judgment. This has been God's pattern throughout the Old Testament. Wherever a prophet rises up and he says, there's going to be judgment, he always says, you're called to repentance. Amen. And so it's a nugget of hope. It is not merely predictive, but it is a compassionate offer of salvation. And when Jesus comes, you will hear him say, well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of your Lord. Amen. Your sacrifice and your efforts and your investments will pay off. Several large translating ministries have come together to make Bible translation a one church worldwide project. One of these groups is the Wycliffe Bible Translators USA. Now, Bob Cresson, who is the president of Wycliffe USA, says the initiative which he calls the Illuminations, Illuminations, every tribe, every nation to finish all Bible translation into all languages by the year 2033. Now notice this, that people have estimated that on an average, uh, approximately every 2,000 year uh, period, of Bible history, something significant happened, such as the flood of Noah and then the coming of Jesus Christ. And then after 2,000 years, they estimate it might be um, the return of the Lord. So I'm not saying that's biblical doctrine. I'm saying people look at it and that's how they, they view it. But they're estimating by the year 2000, uh, 2030 or 2033, it will be uh, 2,000 years since Jesus and so there's a target around 2030, 2033. And they feel that the, the Great Commission must finish by then, right? So the Bible translators want to have the Bible translated in every language by the year 2033. Now the year 2030, watch this now, the United Nations, you can Google this, on the United Nations website, they have something that's called uh, 17 Sustainable Development Goals. You can just do a search for that. UN 17 Sustainable Development Goals. And here's what it, it is. is. By the year 2030, they want to have, be in a position where the world, the entire world will be in a condition of no poverty, zero hunger, good health and well-being. These are the 17. Quality education, gender equality, clean water and sanitation, affordable and clean energy, decent work and economic growth, industry, innovation and infrastructure, re reduce inequalities, sustainable cities and communities, responsible consumption and production, climate action, life below water, which is marine life, life on land, peace, Justice and strong institutions and partnerships for the goals. That's their, their target for 2030. Also, there's an organization, we know Dr. James Davis, and he was here one time, he preached here before, and um, some of us are connected with his organization, and a global, global church network. He, they have come up with this Finish 2030. And what that is, they're in a process of training pastors and missionaries around the world 
where they want to make sure every village and every town throughout all countries of the world will receive a witness of the gospel by the year 2030. Amen. And so, uh, and so there is a target there for the year 2030, which is just probably about six years from now. We don't know. We don't, nobody knows when Jesus will show up, all right? Now, all the signs that you're looking at in the Bible are signs relating to the second coming of Jesus Christ, which is at the end of the seven-year tribulation. These are not signs of the rapture. The rapture is going to take place way before that, and there's going to be no indication, but just suddenly, as a thief in the night, in the blink of an eye, there will be the trumpet of God, the dead in Christ will rise. Those of us who are alive at that time will rise to be with them and we will be forever with the Lord. Amen? Praise God. The rapture is about to take place anytime now. I want to close and make this statement. Please note that earthquakes are not the sign of Christ's return. Neither a plague or a war. But when these combine to create a time of perplexity, that's the sure sign that Jesus is about to come again. Let me ask you the question now. Are you saved? Are you ready? Have you fallen away? Has your faith been diminished and you need a revival in your spirit? The Holy Spirit is here and He wants to do that for you. I want to encourage you to be passionate, diligent, sold out really on fire for Jesus so you will not be caught unawares when Jesus comes. You will notice that I don't go for gymnastics and gimmicks and I don't do the, 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 the ring and the hoop and uh, dance and, and all that stuff. I don't do that. I teach you what the Bible says. And we confirm it with life realities. Are you ready to meet Jesus? Stand with me, we're going to pray. Our Father, in the name of Jesus, you are awesome. You have told us so much, and we need to give attention, and we need to heed your call and be ready. And even now, you're raising up laborers and workers that will advance your cause and take the gospel to people who don't know. We just thank you that you're so full of mercy, so full of compassion, so gracious. We just thank you, Lord God, and we want to surrender ourselves to you, Father. Hallelujah. How many of you need to recommit your ways to the Lord? I want you to say this prayer to the Lord. Mean it in your heart. Be sincere about this. It will touch his heart. Say, dear God in heaven, I know you spoke to me today. It is fearful to see the things happening in the world. I know that you want me to come to you. You want to save me. I need to get saved. I ask you now, forgive all my sins. Break the chains of bondage. Set me free to live for you and to serve you. I give you my heart and I give you my life. I thank you, Lord, for hearing me today in Jesus' name. Lift your hands and say, thank you, Lord. Lift your hands up and say, Jesus, I thank you. Lord, I thank you and I praise you and I worship you this morning. Hallelujah. Let the Holy Ghost be poured out on your people this morning, oh God. Fill our lives to the overflowing, Lord God. Let the anointing be rich and powerful, oh God. Cleanse us, sanctify us, purify us, oh God. Renew strength in us, oh God, that we will be strong against all the powers of darkness. And we will resist the temptations around us, oh God. But let our lives be dedicated unto you, Heavenly Father, because we see the end is near and though there be persecution Lord God we will withstand it in the power and grace of the Holy Spirit and I pray that families would learn to be honest and support each other oh God love and care for one another not be selfish Lord God in the name of Jesus Christ thank you for what you're going to do Lord God we give you the praise 
on the glory somebody shout praise the Lord praise the Lord praise the Lord praise the Lord hallelujah Bless us as we go to our Sunday school classes and bring us back next week. In the name of Jesus, amen.